G'day to all my friends and family and welcome to this episode of everything I've ever learned from Anthony Robbins over the years. I'm putting together a tribute series of 365 videos. That's my plan to uh, put together a, uh, that series so I can capture and document all the things that I've learnt over the years and uh, use it as a foundational sort of uh, exercise uh, for my family and I and any friends or anybody else who is interested to uh, learn many of the lessons that Anthony Robbins has shared over the years with millions of people throughout the world through his programs, through his books, through his videos and uh, just to complement it and supplement it with uh, my own views and my own experiences. So Anthony Robbins is very, very clear on how important it is to model ourselves on other people's um, uh, experiences and to try and identify people who are leaders in their field and try to uh, take the half dozen things that makes them special, that makes them a leader in their field. And the biggest message that I get out of uh, UPW is that you can't be a dabbler in life and expect to have big outcomes and to have a fulfilling life. Um, Anthony Robbins talks about the importance of being obsessed and being obsessed is okay because you need a certain level of OCD, you need a certain level of obsessive sort of personality type in order to be uh, a leader in a field or any field and to have the energy, the momentum and the desire to get up early and stay up late in order to achieve the many dreams that you may come up with. So Anthony Robbins talks about the importance of being all in. And I love this concept because what he's saying is that if you're not all in, if you're not fully committed, if you're not um, fully invested, then you're not going to get the outcomes that you desire and you're going to give up when you uh, hit your first hump in the road or find your, cro your first major hurdle. I remember reading books about Alexander the Great and he said that one of his great strengths and the way he encouraged his soldiers to be all in was that when he got to a particular destination where he wanted to establish himself and he wanted his army to uh, defeat an enemy, what he would do is he would burn his ships so his men would realize that there is no escape and they'd be fighting intensely with a purpose. They would be all in. And it's always easier to win a battle if you've got a purpose for fighting. If there's no escape route, you've got a gun to your head 
and that you know that if you don't succeed, you're going to perish. So you're going to give it all that you've got. And what I'd like to do is supplement and complement Anthony Robbins' material here on being all in and being fully committed and fully on board. We can see it in football teams, we can see it in different sports, we can see it in different aspects of our lives, that the people who are fully committed to a game plan, to a leadership, to their team members, are the ones who are going to have the best outcomes throughout the years. And this year, at the NRL Grand Final, which I was fortunate enough to go to with my family and grandchildren, we saw the Penrith Panthers be victorious for the third year in a row. A three-peat, which hasn't been done since 1983, when the Mighty Eels delivered a third premiership in a row. So this year, once again, we saw a team, and all the teams in the competition are probably as good as each other. But these, te this, these boys who played for Penrith have just something which is a little bit extra, something that separates them from other teams, ever so slightly, but enough to make a massive, massive difference. So on the uh, concept of all in, I've uh, been fortunate to have been, fo been able to follow a vlogger, a vlog series by a, an abbot in a Greek monastery in Greece. His name is Yeron Nectarios and he posts hundreds of videos, he's almost got a thousand videos, um, but he posts in Greek so uh, it's not available to uh, most people to be able to understand it. But with my broken Greek, I love listening to uh, his messages, his spiritual messages. And he recalls early in his career when he was a young man, when he went to his spiritual father as a layman and told his spiritual father that he wanted to be a man of God and to become a priest to which his spiritual father scoffed and laughed at him and said you want to become a priest why would you waste the time becoming a priest and he basically told him that he didn't give him his blessing to enter the priesthood which uh, absolutely shocked this young man who is very intelligent, very well spoken and a leader, an absolute leader and uh, a perfectionist in all the things that he does. And he was very, very troubled to hear that a person that he respected, a person that he looked up to, told him and laughed at him that he wanted to be a priest. Because when this young man went back to his spiritual father and asked him and challenged him and said, but why don't you give me permission? Why don't you give me your blessing to become a man of the cloth? A man to share the teachings of God and Yerim Nectarios says in his blog that what happened was that his spiritual father turned to him and said 
that, look, I've had thousands or hundreds of people over the years ask me for their blessing to become a priest. And I say the same thing to each person. I laugh at them, I ridicule them, to test them, to see if they do have what it takes to enter the priesthood. And the spiritual father said to this young man, what difference are you going to make? There are 10,000 priests in Greece. What difference is another priest going to make? You're just going to waste your time and you're going to end up disappointed if you want to become a priest. And if you want to become a priest, I still say to you that I do not give you my blessing and I'm telling you that you're wasting your time and you're better off just going and doing something else. Once again, the young man was troubled by this feedback saying, what does one have to do to get the blessing of this spiritual father in order to become and to enter the priesthood? And he went once again to his spiritual father and he said to him, why do you take such a strong position? Why do you make me feel so bad? And the spiritual father said to him, that one priest, a priest, an average priest, can't make a difference. However, if you tell me, and if you commit to me, that you want to become the priest, the spiritual man, that is going to lead and be different to everybody else in a positive way, if you're going to be a person who's going to make a massive difference with your commitment and your drive and your learning and your love and your programs, then and only then I will give you my blessing. So the message that the spiritual father was saying to the young man who became Yero Nectarios was that he needed to go all in and not just have a dream of becoming a priest or the dream of becoming an accountant or a lawyer or a doctor or a scientist. The big challenge that the spiritual father was giving to the young man was that whatever your dream is, your dream must be not just to be a priest or a scientist or a accountant, but to be the best one that you can possibly be. And that requires you to inject your dreams with all inness. You've got to go all in. You've got to fully commit. You've got to burn the boats, burn the ships. You've got to be pinned up against the wall. You've got to have a gun to your head so that whatever you do, you do it to the best of your ability. And what we learn in life is that just like a diamond, which is made up of the simplest compounds in the world, just carbon, when that is 
um, and that is put through heat and pressure, tremendous heat and pr tremendous pressure, it becomes a brilliant unbreakable diamond. And similarly, people need to go through many, many tests in their lives in order to find how strong they really are. It's only when you're challenged, it's only when you lean just outside your comfort zone, as Anthony Robbins says, it's only when you embrace discomfort, uncertainty, pain, hurt, uh, darkness, your own demons. It's only when you embrace these things with your two hands, your ten fingers wrapped around them, and your arms squeezing these things close to your body. It's only when you welcome these things into your life that you build the patterns to be able to find your greatness and to express your greatness and to go places where most people don't dare to go. Anthony Robbins reminds us time and time again, we need momentum. Every path that we take in life meanders, it has hurdles, it has potholes, it has rivers, and it has hills. And all of those things need momentum to be able to get over, under, through, and to get to the other side. Anthony Robbins remem reminds us that each path appears like it has an ending. But as you continue to progress, that end is but a bend. And the closer you get, the more you can see and the more you can strategize and the more you can do in order to get to where you want to go. And when one door shuts, when one window shuts, other windows, other doors open up. So opportunities abound, but they only abound to the people who have momentum, who keep on going, who keep on testing the boundaries, testing their fears, because Anthony Robbins reminds us that the word fear actually means false evidence appearing real. I remember him saying that back in 94 and it made a huge impact on me because he reminds us all that all of the things that we fear, all the things we are afraid of are just figments of our imagination. They aren't real. Just like when I was a kid and I'd be watching Lost in Space, I remember episodes where Dr. Smith was out on his own and all of these images, these scary, monstrous images, would present themselves in his uh, in front of him and he was scared really really scared until he developed some courage and he said you're not real go away and he'd shout and he'd get more courageous and then as if it was magic those scary images would simply disappear and to an eight-year-old a seven-year-old boy that I was with my friend Alec Pappas watching these reruns of Lost in Space over and over again. These messages back then looked unreal. They didn't look real. 
But what happens is, is that as you get older, you start to realise that many fears that people have are irrational fears. So much so that Anthony Robbins says that over 95%, if not more, of the fears that people have are irrational and they will never ever come to fruition unless and only when you manifest them by focusing on them time and time again. So uh, some powerful lessons there. So just in summary, just to finish off with Yeron Nectarios. Yeron Nectarios has become an elder and he has no money. All of his wealth, all of his money, he donated it to his mission, to his church, and he's built a massive monastery in Greece by talking, by welcoming people, and he's set up a YouTube channel with over a thousand videos on spiritual matters that he talks to in the Greek language, and he's got over 200,000 followers. He deserves to have millions of followers, given that uh, the Greek Orthodox and Eastern Orthodox are uh, you know, in their hundreds of millions. Um, but he's got 200,000, um, which sounds like a lot to me, because I've only got 200 followers on my YouTube channel. But as I say, his material is brilliant and he deserves to have over a million or in fact millions of followers. So what I like to do is I like to listen to his vlogs in Greek, uh, understand them and then translate them as best I can into English. But this particular vlog that he talked about in terms of him entering the, uh, his spiritual life as a young man was something that was brilliant. I absolutely love that story and I use it all the time when I'm talking to young people because Anthony Robbins reminds us that most people, and you could probably say all people, overestimate what they can achieve in one year and grossly underestimate what they can achieve in 10. And a lot of people, because they overestimate what they can do in one year, think that they need to back off. They need to uh, take their foot off the pedal when in fact they just need to change their approach as Anthony Robbins teaches us and just to keep on going, be firm, be pig-headed in your goals as long as they align with your values, make sure that your actions are aligned to your core values, your guiding principles, and just change your approach and that massive action will deliver massive results. So Yero Nectarios has, to my opinion, achieved, um, and he won't admit it of course, what his spiritual father wanted of him. He wanted him to be different from everybody else. He wanted him to be effective in what he did, to make a difference, to generate interest, to generate the love of God and of God's teachings and um, he's done that and he will continue to do it because all of the things that he thought that were impossible became possible through his personal exertion and by encouraging others 
to follow his dreams and to be part of um, his journey. Uh, because there are people in life looking, searching for what is, um, what is their calling. And yet on Nectario says that you need to be introspective, you need to look inside your heart and find what your purpose is, what your mission is in life, and it needs to be aligned to what is God pleasing. The mistake that a lot of people make over and over again is that they do things that are people pleasing. They do things to please their parents, their friends, their family, their uncles, their aunts, their grandparents, their workmates. They go and spend money they don't have to buy things they don't like to impress people they can't stand. And then they wonder why they're unhappy. They wonder why they're empty. But it's pretty easy to see why because they're not doing things that are there to serve God, to express their love and glory of God, and to use their skills, their uh, facilities, their wealth, their riches, to help their neighbor, to love their neighbor as they love themselves. So, once again, the key message from this video series today, this episode, and the key message from Anthony Robbins is that we can't go through life being a spectator. We need to be a participant, and not just a participant, but a participant who is all in, a person who wants to make a dif difference, wants to make a big difference um, in their lives and to influence and help many people. We have the technology these days, we have the platforms with social media and all of the other platforms to be able to take our message and to help people from all over the world because the world is digitized. These videos that we create, these programs that we have, we can share with people from all over the world because all they need is an internet connection and they can watch these videos, they can learn these lessons, they can take what we have and use it in the best way to help them. But you can't dabble, you mustn't dabble is the message from Anthony Robbins. You need to know what you want and you need to do it with all your heart, mind and soul. You need to push yourself hard to challenge yourself because Anthony Robbins reminds us that being successful is really, really easy. Really easy. There's nothing hard about being successful. But he also says that it's even easier to be unsuccessful. It's even easier to do nothing and stay in bed, stay on the couch. You at least have to do something in order to generate momentum and to get closer to where you want to be. The big man says that the best time to plant a tree is yesterday. Actually, 10 years ago, the best time to plant a tree was 10 years ago. 
and the second best time to plant a tree is today. I use that example with my wife, Paula, who went to the dentist and had some dental work done. And we're speaking to the dentist there. And we said, yes, the best time to have done a lot of this work may have been a few years ago. But the second best time to do it is right now. And we did it today. And she's really, really happy about that. Somebody's had a fire over here. Uh, let's hope they don't have fires um, during the summer because looks like it's going to be a fire, fire season this year with all of the dry timber and with all the fuel everywhere. Uh, we'll see what happens, but it's going to be a dry summer and let's hope that it's not a dangerously dry summer. So there you go. Alexander the Great knew about it. The ancient philosophers knew about it. That in order to get the best out of yourself and the best out of everybody else is to limit the choices that you have to limit the escape routes and as my school teacher Mr Swain who I had at Newington College when I was a young man said he says don't ever underestimate humanity the human species is very very um, Ingenious, he said, ingenious. And whatever problem we face, we will find a solution. We will find not only one solution, but multiple solutions. And from a young man, I remember those words because they are comforting. They are nurturing words. They are words that allow people to live with positive expectancy. Of course, as humans, as people, we all make mistakes. But we make a lot more good decisions than what we do bad decisions. Um, we need to realize that. Um, and through our lives, we forget all the good decisions that we've made. We've, we forget all the tough times that we've been through. We forget all of the challenges that we've been able to get through over, under. You know, we've forgotten how many little hills, how many potholes, how many bridges, how many hurdles we've had thrown in our path. And just like when we were babies, when we were learning how to walk, we just got through it. We just got over it. We just did it. We didn't have to get it right the first time or the second time. We just need to keep on trying. And we needed people to encourage us, to invigorate us with love and hope and to have those guiding lights, knowing that in our lives, we're going to have two things for sure and for certain. And those two things are going to be struggle and hope. And struggle isn't bad. It's only through fighting. It's only through struggling that we get to grow and develop to become better, stronger, um, richer, and to develop a uh, library of patterns, of uh, things that we know work and things that we know that don't work so that we can use that to make decisions and to evaluate the first, second and third level consequences of all the decisions we make. But regardless of what we talk about, 
and my uncle George used to say this all the time, we can talk about these things until the cows come home. Unless you're doing something to create your future, then chances are your future isn't going to come looking for you unless it's somebody's else, somebody else's desire. You can't actualize, you can't manifest your future by not doing anything. And if you don't have plans for your life, if you don't have plans for your future, then what's going to happen is you're going to live out somebody's el somebody else's plans for you, like it or not. So uh, once again, something important to consider, something important to uh, think about, that we need to go all out, and we need to go all out right now. Whatever you do, do it with passion, as Anthony Robbins says. Don't wait. You don't know how much time you've got. You're better off acting and acting again and again and again and testing your, uh, your fate rather than waiting for fate to tap you on the shoulder. The only way to catch a fish is to put a fishing line in the water with a bait on it. And you may not catch the fish today, tomorrow, next week, but sooner or later, you will create your luck by testing, by pushing, by welcoming your fate, uh, by doing things rather than talking about things. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me on this episode of All That I've Learned from Anthony Robbins over the years. I think today is episode 29 of 365. I've got six more episodes where I can say that I've reached the 10% mark. And like everything I've ever done in my life, be it half marathon, be it swimming, lap swimming, be it getting a black belt, be it being a dance fitness instructor, be it getting through university and along my career, I always say to myself, if I can get to halfway, I know that I can get to the end. I've always used that as a mantra. If I can get to halfway, it's guaranteed that I can make it to the finish. So at this point in time, my initial goal is to get to 10%, to get to 36 or 37 videos. And then I know that that is halfway. That is halfway to getting to 20%. And then when I get to 20%, I know that that's halfway to getting to 40%. And when I get to 40%, so on and so forth, I know that there's no way in the world, as long as I'm healthy, as long as I'm fit, that I can generate the uh, content to be able to honour Anthony Robbins and to use this as a tribute to him for all the good work that he has done over the years. He is, without a doubt, the best at what he does, and nobody tries to be like Anthony Robbins because that in itself is impossible. But each person can continue his good works by taking the, lesson, the learnings and re framing them, reteaching them using other examples because each lesson in itself allows people 
to uh, join the dots, the many dots that we have in life, and you never know what you're going to say, what you're going to read, what you're going to discover that is going to be an aha moment for you and is going to allow you to uh, make a major breakthrough in your wisdom, in your learning, something that you can use to better your life, or better still, something that you can use to enable other people to better their life and to have their own breakthroughs. So I look forward to coming to you from a different place with a different message of empowerment and to apply the learnings that we've been able to gather over the years from Anthony Robbins and many other greats because we all stand on the shoulders of great people that came before us. And as Anthony Robbins reminds us, there is nothing new in the world. It's just new to us because we discover it, we learn it for the first time. And Anthony Robbins also reminds us that the art of learning is simply attaching the unknown to what you already know. It's an association. It's comparing, it's contrasting, it's baselining, it's benchmarking. It's taking what you already know and adding something new to it where one plus one becomes 150, doesn't become three or two because ideas, when you join ideas together, you create multiple synapses at the same time in your brain. And those patterns, those responses, that thinking, that deep thinking, can one day come to your aid when you least expect it. It'll pop out of your subconscious and You'll say to yourself, how the hell did I think of that? But it's just the way we are. We're built in God's image. We're brilliant in every way. We are teleological in nature. Whatever problems we face, we'll find multiple solutions for them. So once again, something to mull over, something to think about. I'm sorry that these videos are so long, but once I get started, I just love to talk about this sort of stuff. And uh, anybody who's been to an Anthony Robbins UPW, you can see how much Anthony Robbins loves it, as well as his audience love it, where he can speak for 18 hours straight without stopping. And you wonder, <laughs> How can he do it? It's all coming from his soul. It's all coming from his heart. He believes it, he lives it, he smells it, and he lives it, as we said. Anyway, take care. It's almost at the end of the day. I better head home to see how my good wife, Paula, is going. Uh, she had a bit of a traumatic day today at the dentist, but it's the beginning of her new health, her new future, and everything that we did today is an investment. And uh, I'm sure that things are going to be much better for her um, in days to come. Take care everybody, yasas, and we'll chat again soon. Bye for now.